All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Taimba and welcome to our Ghana, July 11th to the 23rd, Roots and Culture, Journey of a Lifetime. Okay. All right, let me adjust this. There we go. Yeah, so family, what we're going to do is talk about that wonderful, incredible journey, and that is our 24th uh, journey of a lifetime, or will be our 24th journey of a lifetime to Ghana. So over the period of time from 2006 to uh, now 2024, uh, the world has changed as far as our Ghana, and uh, we've just evolved with the energy and look into this share with you an incredible program that we have this uh, built and change over a period of time. And this will be our first time going back to Ghana in uh, actually the longest break uh, since um, May of uh, 2023. And uh, some people may wonder why uh, you know so much time in Ghana. Ghana is honestly just uh, the ideal country uh, for, you know, for those of us looking to connect with our roots and looking to just build on to a country. I'm not saying that people shouldn't go to different places, but you should. Um, I've traveled to 12 different countries on the African continent, and by far, Ghana's just been a nice energy. You know, you see the colors, uh, the vibes. And when you get there and you land in a brand new airport, and then you, you know, we take you to an incredible neighborhood, and you have your nice, uh, luxurious stay. And when you go to all the historical and cultural tour sites, uh, you know, you feel a good uh, energy. So, most of the other countries and most of other things that we've done um, is just based on that vibrant itinerary and always trying to this, you know, give you a different feel of uh, Africa. So we've spent uh, the last year um, from um, Liberia, Morocco, South Africa, Tanzania, and uh, now we're back uh, in Ghana. And so some of the main things I want to talk about is make sure that everyone is clear on all the preparation uh, details uh, it's a journey I've taken over a period of time. And as I learn and experience uh, the African continent, we just usually just give our best recommendations and how to make your journey smooth and painless. And uh, one of the first things that uh, we always start with is um, you know, packing, arranging, and then making sure that you have all the things that you need uh, before you travel. That way you can avoid uh, just making your way around the country, just running around looking for things. And so what I want to do is uh, start with screen sharing and I will uh, go through some of the details for the uh, journey, uh, starting with our day-to-day -day itinerary. But before I do that, what I want to do is open things up for introductions, uh, looking for volunteers, and hopefully everyone is open to this talking for a few minutes and sharing their interests and sharing what they're looking to you know, connect with on the journey of a lifetime to Ghana. I'll start if you're okay with that. Can everyone hear me? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Break the ice. <laughs> well, good evening. My name is Arlene Cameron Lloyd. My husband and I will be attending. And um, we are extremely excited. We were supposed to take this trip with Bomani in 2020 when the world shut down. So we're excited to be um, afforded the opportunity to go this time. I am originally from Georgetown, Guyana, grew up in Brooklyn, New York, moved to Florida, which is where we currently reside. And I am a veteran educator with 20, well, I just finished 28 years under my belt. And I am extremely happy that school is now closed and they get to hang out with their parents. All right. Yes, Arlene, appreciate the energy and uh, let us know what you're looking to get out of the journey or if you want to share anything else more. Um, I am just excited to plant my feet on the soil of Mother Africa and we are open to whatever experiences that will allow us to connect with our ancestors. And hopefully this will not be the, it is the first trip, but hopefully it will not be the last. All right, excellent. Well, appreciate your energy. And let me move forward. All right, uh, Seymour family, uh, would you like to um, go next? Okay, uh, I, I, I'll be happy to go. My name is Staten Hurd, and my wife is off camera, but her name is Sandra. We live in Augusta, Georgia. 
Uh, we're, we also are very excited to go. Um, I, I think I told somebody we had gone before, but as I think about it, maybe I didn't. It's been a long time. Uh, and But at any rate, we have been to Africa, you know, a few times previously, but this, you know, we're excited to be able to go to Ghana and experience everything that it has to offer. I want to know that I've been there. I want to experience everything that, you know, is available and understand the culture, meet some good people and that kind of thing. And absolutely. Uh, we're definitely looking forward to uh, connecting and uh, meeting with you. I appreciate uh, the energy and the introduction. Uh, next person, um, we can just even go towards uh person on my right, which is uh, Seymour, uh, Naomi and uh, uh, Seymour. Sorry, Naomi Clifford, uh, Seymour. Naomi, Naomi and Clifford Seymour. All right, there you go, you're live. Just uh, click on unmute and then I can hear you. Okay, can you hear us now? Uh, yes. Okay, so I am Clifford. My wife is Naomi. And this will be our first trip to Ghana. We visited Africa once before um, visiting um uh, in Rwanda, Ethiopia, and uh, we visited Tanzania, Kenya, Burundi. So um, I am essentially uh, retired now, and so is my wife. Um, my wife was uh, in teaching, and and I was in uh, transport refrigeration for nearly 40 years. So um, I've been wanting to get into Ghana um, earlier, whenever the pandemic was about. Um, I never took the, um, the vaccine, <laughs> so I wasn't able to get into Ghana. My wife did take the vaccine, but uh, on this occasion, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get in uh, with no problems. And I am really hopeful the, about this trip. Uh, my wife is um, of a different mind right now. I'm trying to convince her that this is the place we are meant to be. And I'm prepared at this time to actually look for some land. So we're hopeful that we might be able to maybe make a, a different beginning on the continent. So, um, hi everybody. I am Naomi, the wife, <laughs> and I am looking forward to the trip. Um, and I will be traveling, of course, with my husband and my son and his wife. So, I'm looking forward to this to be an exciting venture and something that we can certainly share with the family back home and um, get them on their feet and ready to touch a little Mother Earth themselves. And I look forward to meet each and every one of you also and then spending time together. So thank you. Right, excellent. I appreciate uh, your introduction. I'm looking forward to meeting you and your family. All right, so as we uh, move along, uh, I have our uh, next uh, Wayman uh, Jones. Uh, Wayman, what we're doing is uh, this, uh, introductions. Uh, share as much as you want to share. And uh, yeah. Wayman Jones, uh, my wife Carol. Uh, it's, her picture's there, but she's over there doing something. But uh, we look forward to going. Uh, I haven't been before, but I've done some work there before, so it's going to be interesting to see what's what it is to actually go there. And I'm interested in uh, learning more about uh, Ghana and all the things it has to offer. Uh, my wife is a gerontologist, and she's a uh, interested also in going there and seeing what's going on with the people there. Uh, I happen to be an engineer that's done design work there. So I want to go there and see what uh, what the country's like. And I'm very excited about it. Um, it seems like a trip of a lifetime. <laughs> that's about it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, wait a minute, wait a minute. I appreciate it. Uh, Looking forward to meeting you uh, again. And uh, we have a lot of different people coming from a lot of different places. And 
We're going to work out and talk about the connections, and I'll be there to receive everyone in uh, Ghana. Else I'll be there uh day before everyone else, or at least earlier before everyone else. So we can get you uh, the airport pickups and those things I'm going to coordinate. And the main thing is that let's, look, let's keep up with the uh, WhatsApp. Uh, I don't send a bunch of things on there, but I will keep you posted as time go along, especially the last few weeks on all of the need to know and the movement. And then also when you get to uh, Ghana, just look out for the communication and you know we'll be there to receive you. So towards the end of the conference call, we're going to be talking about all the ins and outs as far as getting to the country when we talk about the itinerary. Uh, so uh, let's uh, move along and uh, let me just uh, connect the next person. Uh, we have uh, Pamela Fuller. Uh, let's unmute yourself. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I, I can hear you. Yeah. Now. Yes, I'm Pamela, um, Pamela Fuller. I'm Jamaican by birth. Um, live in the United States. I am a teacher, um, a teacher of history. So um, one of my reasons to visit Ghana is historical. Um, I know that a lot of our ancestors came from this part of the world and I want to see and experience, you know, what this was like. I want to see and experience some of the culture because this is something I bring back with me into the classroom and I want it as a, I, I like to travel and I want to um, gather this body of knowledge as well. This is going to be my first time on the African continent. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm looking forward to this one. Yes, uh, Pamela, appreciate your introduction. Let me just switch. All right, I uh, appreciate your family. Uh, Definitely, definitely, and uh, share as much as you want. Uh, it's uh, all good. This, uh, this breaking the energy, so we can just um, get you know get a visual and get a you know, idea of uh, at least some of us that are looking to uh, join us. So as we move along, uh, next person I have is uh, Jasmine. Okay. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> I too am Jamaican and I too am a teacher. Um, I'm a teacher of ELA, but I love the study of uh, culture. I love to travel and um, the continent of Africa is um, one that I have always wanted to visit. Before COVID, I had big plans to to do it in that year, in the year of 2020. And then COVID um, changed all of that. So I am very excited to actually um, be on the brink of seeing this dream realize. Um, I look forward to just, um, you know, um, learning more about the history of, of the country and just to make the connection to my roots. Um, so yes. So that is where my um that is where it is right now with me. All right, I uh, appreciate your energy and uh welcome to the journey of a lifetime from uh you know from Jamaica to Ghana. You're gonna love it. Uh, it's uh incredible connection. Remind you of the beautiful tropical Jamaica. Okay. And so um you and I will be talking some more as we get you, uh, you and Pamela ready. So appreciate uh, the heads up and this uh, jo joining in, and we're gonna make it work for you. All right, so family, let's uh, proceed. Uh, next person, I have uh, Lamont uh, Crenshaw. All right, uh, Lamont, uh, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, 
All right, you can hear me now? <laughs> uh, yes, I can hear you now. How are you feeling? All right. Yes, yes. All sir. right, I'm, I'm Lamont. Attorney for Lifetime, go ahead. All right. Um, I'm Lamont Crenshaw. My, my African name is Kwaku, uh, which is what I prefer. Uh, I'm a retired uh, psychologist. I currently live in West Palm Beach, Florida. I've been interested in Pan-Africanism all of, all of my adult life. And so one of my interests would be, would be to, see, to, to see all the monuments and the, the different uh, uh, historical uh, references to uh, Pan-Africanism. And uh, you'll get a chance. You'll get a chance to talk to me more during the trip. I look forward to seeing everybody. This is. Uh, my second trip to to Africa. I've been to Africa before, but before it was uh, for a conference, so I didn't get get the chance to do a lot. So this will be a different kind of experience, and I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. And uh, and uh, yes, uh, excellent. Uh, and yes, the journey of a lifetime is going to take you around Ghana, so you'll be able to get a feel of the full, the a, a full feel of the uh, the. the the main aspects of the country. So appreciate you joining and let's uh, proceed to the next person. Uh, I have uh, Sian. Hi everyone, this is Sian from Illinois. This plains Illinois. My husband is sleeping, Courtney. So he's going to work. Anyway, um, this is my second time with Bomani. I was with mm -hmm. him last year. Jeez. And I'm also from Jamaica. So all the Jamaicans will it will feel like home and it's something to experience. It's like this time last year when we went, um, to me, it was a short trip. It wasn't long enough this time. I wanted to stay longer, but unfortunately I have to cut it short because of family issues coming up. But um, you, everyone, it will be um, something to experience, especially when you go to Cape Coast, uh, Kumasi. That's where I think our root says, you know, it's like, um, it's it kind of remind me of the history back home with Nanny and everything else and the Maroons. So you you will enjoy it and just be prepared to take in everything, absorb everything you can, and take it back home to your families. Yes, yes, yeah, I appreciate it and looking forward to connecting with you again. Uh, you have any uh, things you like to share as far as this health, wellness, anything in general? to um, anyone that's looking to join us like health wise uh yes or, or anything that you you know it, it's always it's always an issue with, you know one or two situations with people, mm -hmm. with yeah and food yes make sure you have everything that's pertaining to your stomach because sometimes you might take your um um whatever you need for um diary or whatever make sure you take it before you eat anything because that's my experience because I was taking it afterwards. It didn't help me. So I was told I have to take it before. And also, if it's possible, try to bring some antibiotics with you because um, that would kind of help with certain things because, you know, you, you don't have time to run to the pharmacy sometime or depending on where you are. So that will also help us. And make sure you bring sunscreen, your um, mosquito repellent, stuff like that. And you'll be fine. And also, make sure you bring a fan, a portable fan. <laughs> That's very helpful. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. it's hot. <laughs> I hope it's a lot cooler than, uh, in July. I hope so. so. I hope so. so. We're kind of like in the middle of the <laughs> rainy season, so should be light. Hopefully, it's not a whole lot of rain, but it should be a lot cooler. That's hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yes, family. So we are proceeding along. And we have our uh, Kim. Greetings, our uh, Kim. All right, let's make sure you're unmuted. Sorry, it wouldn't unmute. I don't know what was going on there. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Good to see you. you. Look excited like you're ready. I, I am. Pr I'm pretty excited. So it sounds like a lot of people um, thought about doing this the same time I thought about doing this. I was going to um, travel for the year of return um, before COVID hit. 
and I was going to travel with my husband, who is now my ex-husband. So I'm coming alone. I feel alone, but I, I think I'm going to do it anyway, because um, I want to feel Africa. Uh, angry about the history for a long time, but I'm ready now to feel it. Um, I think I can be dangerous when I get angry. So, you know, you got to go there and then come back home. And I didn't know what was going to happen when I came back home. So I'm trying to, I just want to feel it, see what um, what we were taken from and just try to reconnect with um, some of what we lost. i interested in the investing there. My background is in uh, mortgage underwriting and my husband and I did some property investing So, and some uh, stock market stuff. So just excited to... Um, see what's happening over there, see what we can, act I can actually um, get started, if anything. Looking for a place to retire. Uh, excellent. Uh, that sounds uh, great. And uh, that's part of the future momentum of what we're building uh, as we uh, work towards figuring out more on how we can build a Black Star Pan-African community. Yeah. And uh, this create a better opportunity for those who want to eventually move, live, do business and invest. So as you talk about the uh, business uh, aspect of it, uh, we have the uh, Business and Investment Conference, uh, which is strictly just uh, now for educational purpose and to give you the best connection and clarity before you make any decisions and put you in a position to connect with people that's uh, there to assist you versus taking advantage of you. All right, so let's uh, proceed. I'm trying to see if I missed anyone. Uh, Tia Baker. Greetings, Atiyah. Greetings, everyone. I'm sorry I'm not a, able to be on camera, but greetings and greetings from Pittsburgh, PA. And looking forward to uh, traveling with you all. I too am, this is a birthday gift to myself. My birthday is July 8th. And so I said, I'm just going to do this thing for me. And this is always wanted to travel uh, to the motherland and it just so happened that this year I can do it. I'm also interested in the investing. I want to see the properties, um, networking. I'm just excited to go. I just want to put my feet on the land, right? Um, so that's all I want to say. And thank you. I'm excited to meet all of you. Yes, absolutely. And I was looking uh, for your uh, friend, uh, Alicia. She actually just left. She had to work. So she's headed to, to work. So right. I we'll, we'll share the video with her and she can always uh, just uh, connect back. But uh, yes, I'll, I'll be connecting with her and uh, just making sure she is uh, ready to go. And she <laughs> is ready to go. She is ready. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, perfect. So, let me see who else we have. And we have uh, Khalil and uh, Heather. I think, uh, you know, all right. Then we have one or two people, and hopefully, some more people will come on in. And I have husband Khalil. Um, Naomi and, and Clifford Seymour are both his. Yes, we heard from them already. So um, this will be our first trip to Africa. And uh, for us, it's, you know, it's a new that we haven't had, and we really are looking forward to that. Personally, I know that, you know, I was raised stories from my father, and uh, my mom always, you know, making sure that I was the history of not only black people, but of Africa in general. And, um, you know, it's something that it'll be interesting to kind of actually experience a location firsthand. Um, I know I'm, I, I was trying to speak for my wife, but like, you know, she can tell you it's probably just an experience that, you know, she's excited about because it's a once in a lifetime sort of trip, uh, which. Yes, you know, exactly. Um, I'm a former history teacher, so 
there's also the history aspect for me that I'm really interested in learning more about and experiencing um, and supporting my my family on this trip as well. Excellent and wonderful. Well, welcome to the journey of a lifetime. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, meeting you. You and the rest of your family are looking forward to you to connect with uh, the rest of us on the uh, journey. Yes, and as we proceed, uh, let me see. We have uh, Carol Rowe. And then Charlie, uh, you can uh, go next. Uh, Carol, uh, can you hear us? I just have to unmute yourself. Okay, she's coming around. Hold on. All right, hello, everybody. Oh, let me get on my All right, uh, greetings, uh, Carol. Um, I'm I'm excited to go to be. Oh, you have two accounts. Uh, yes, uh, let's open one and leave the other one uh, uh, muted. And, uh, Carol, are you still there? Uh, let me know when you're ready. Uh, let me just switch over. I thought they could hear me on you. Are you muted? Yes. Oh, okay. Are you guys there? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm glad to... Oh, okay. Well, let me go to yours because... Okay, there you go. Okay, you there? Hello? Oh, you can, uh, yes, yeah, uh, we, we can, can hear you. We, we can, can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. All right, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to meeting everyone and uh, just being a part of this awesome trip. We, It's my first time going to Africa as well, and I'm just looking forward to everything that we're able to do and see and enjoy. All right, excellent. Well, appreciate your energy and uh, welcome to the journey of a lifetime. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, let me see if anybody else is joining. All right, uh, greetings, uh, Charlie. Uh, you are you are live. Uh, so everyone, this is my dad, uh, Charlie Brown, and uh, his, <laughs> his, his third journey and second in Ghana. Uh, so welcome to the journey and welcome back. And uh, Sian is on the call also. So Greetings. I'm looking forward to meet each and every one. And as my son said, this is my second trip to Ghana. Went Ghana last year, and then I went to South Africa in December. And I like love Ghana, so I said, you know what, I got to go back there. And I believe you all will enjoy but there's a lot of stuff, a lot, lot of things you guys will learn and see when you're in Ghana, especially when you guys are in Cape Town. That's where you will learn a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, Cape Coast. I know we were in Cape Town, <laughs> South Africa. Okay, Cape Coast, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, Cape Coast. I'm sorry about that. I'm talking about South Africa. Cape, Cape Coast, yeah? And uh, that's where you will find you'll learn a lot of stuff that that go, went on during the sleeper time. But matter of fact, I'm just glad to be on this journey one more time and hope to meet you all and hope that we will have a very enjoyable and entertaining time and learn much more about our ancestors. And that's it, basically. I'm a shy guy and I don't like to talk as much. My son, my son do all the talking. So as I said, hopefully everything will be okay and looking forward to meet you guys. So have a good night and enjoy yourself. Be safe. All right, yes, so that is our uh, introductions for everyone who showed up. Anyone else who would like to say or share anything, uh, the floor is open. Uh, beyond that, I'm going to get things uh, set up for uh, screen sharing.
Omani, you're frozen. Yes, uh, I'm trying to get to our screen sharing ready. There you go. All right, Doc, can you trying to see what's going on with the network? Uh, hopefully, you can uh, still uh, hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so I'm going to start uh, screen sharing. And Bomani, you said we'll have access to this. So uh, we, yes, can, this, um, we can look at the PowerPoint and not have to take notes. Yeah, um, everything I'm going over is just uh, things on the website. So you can always access the files on the website for clarity. Um, and uh, But yeah, you can take notes, mental notes, all good. And so that's the uh, YouTube page, and I do my best to this, uh, this over a period of time, just upload all the video highlights, and then as far as pictures, just try my best to get them around the different parts of the social world, and then up, update some of uh, the pictures that we have. So some are old, some are new. But I just saw a website, africaforafricans.org, and the main thing I'm always uh, letting everyone know, if you're looking to travel with us, uh, all the details are on the website ahead of time. The only thing that we made us adjust over the period, period of time is the uh, itinerary, uh, flight schedule change, and also, you know, if we can upgrade or change, uh, you know, change hotels and things like that, um, those are some of the things that uh, we adjust. Before I get right to the tour information, what I want to share, share with you is the uh, Africa tour book. So you... From the main menu, you click on Africa Tour Books, and these are the last set of books uh, of the last journey. Mystery Babylon. So that's Liberia, Morocco, um, the first journey we did this year, and then the close our journey last year, South Africa and Tanzania. And this is our last Ghana journey. And this is a book that uh, I'll get to everyone uh, usually about a week before we travel, and it's a digital book. And then in between that time, my goal is just to get the book printed. And uh, once I see you in Ghana, I'll give you a tour book, a uh, tour T-shirt, a tour bag, and some pens and some uh, of our postcards and flyers to share with anyone who may be uh, interested uh, to travel into Africa with us. So this is a part of our this, uh, documentation to this uh, share information. And also, it's a program guide. So... It's um, a little different from one journey to the next, but these are also programs you can look at uh, to get a feel of it. And all this information, you can. this is something you can share and also you can download as a PDF. All right, so let me go back up and I'm going to click on the uh, tour link for Ghana. And also, let me get back to even the main menu. So once you're on the main menu, any uh, updates on as far as our general conference calls or links to any of our social pages or just any general updates, uh, it's just in this uh, brief, uh, brief uh, page area. So the next conference call, uh, which is just a general conference call, it's Sunday, June 30th, and then August uh, 1st. Then scroll down some more, and then these are just, uh, the links right here. Talk about the, the Facebook group pages. And this is just a world of just uh, getting around and sharing information. And this is 34 groups uh, from 2006 to 2024. So that is, and as, as you scroll all the way down, you see all of the journeys that we've taken. And in between this list is 23 uh, Ghana journey out of the uh, 34. So that'll be 35 journeys all together um, when we are closed out here in uh, Ghana in July. So looking forward to it. And as you can see, these are groups of vibrant uh, colors and energy in this uh, culture, energy of this beautiful people um, and just showcasing our this uh, Pan-African energy and this uh, our Black roots and culture connection. Uh, so uh, 
it's just been a great uh, journey in this. Looking forward to just connecting and sharing with people this uh, connection that we have as we look forward to building business and connect more in Africa. And as you scroll down, you'll see um, all of the journeys in the, the year 2020, went all the way to 2023 and during the COVID era. So uh, even regardless of that, uh, you know, nothing was able to stop us. Uh, we just keep on just moving on to our mission and vision and as we keep on building energy to build our Black Star Pan-African community. So anyone who haven't seen the full gallery, you can always just go on the website and scroll down and then just navigate around the website. It's just all details in this, showing you what we do around Africa and this uh, getting you prepared. So from here, I'm gonna click on the, right, so Ghana link right here. Now, all of these uh, tour links, uh, we have a full overview that this talks about this uh, highlights of all the things that uh, we're gonna we're gonna be doing and also what's included, what's not included. And this uh, the tour package, our uh, prices and details. And overview, the itineraries are full day-to-day, -day, which I'll go through uh, general terms, uh, visa information, which at this point, uh, anyone who needs any visa information or visa help, uh, you can just always uh, text and call me, especially if you're one of the last few people who still need a visa. And if you're still doing visas now, just make sure you do the full expedite process and follow the details in the two emails that I've sent and use the host information that I've sent to this kind of copy and paste for anything dealing with the host sponsorship and organizations who have invited us. Uh, so that's uh, one of the, and then also my sample applications on the, um, the first uh, visa email, which is this, the visa you know, preparation and requirements. So those are the two emails I use to assist everyone in doing the uh, visas. And then we have, there's a, there's several uploads uh, that you have to upload. So there's a few things you may have to scan and take a photo with. Uh, so those are all, all things that, um, you know, if you get stuck somewhere, uh, I'll assist you and walk you through. And the main thing of the visa process is that you just have to print your visa application, put in your actual passport and a passport style photo and pay for your return envelope. Uh, so that's uh, the only thing that you have to just uh, send on in and the uploads and all the things that you put in the application will be just the details that they need. So it's, uh, you know, can, it can be a long process, but uh, you can get it done in a day. Um, sometimes I have people come here and I'll just, within an hour, just get it done for them. And as long as they have all the things that they need. But uh, in general, I would say about two days uh, if you take your time. Uh, but for those who need to rush and get it done, uh, whenever you need to get me on the phone or need for me to connect with you, just, uh, just please just reach out um, and I do my best to just get it, uh, get you organized. So anyone who still has visas, I'm hoping that you can just get it mailed out by Saturday the latest. That way you can get to the embassy on Monday and they should they can have it back for you uh, before the end of the month. Uh, the language translation, three uh, language translations, nice little language chart. And then we have the tour preparation list, which will be the other thing that we'll go through. So this is the uh, itinerary. All right, so day one, Thursday, July 11th, uh, depart uh, to Accra via Amsterdam or London. So this is the, um, throughout the time I was trying to, at one point trying to get every, all of us on Delta and then uh, that, that didn't that didn't work out well. Uh, then I try to do it the other way. I uh, get all of us on American Airlines, and that didn't work out uh, well. But what worked out was uh, depends on where you are. One of the routes worked better than the next, to where you didn't have ridiculous uh, either layover, ridiculous layovers, or just um, more multiple connections than you needed. So I was able to work that out to where half of the group will be in one place, and the half will be in the next, and uh, I'll be there with my crew to pick you up uh, for the first group uh, that arrived from London at 6.20 p.m. in uh, Ghana, July 12th, and then come back and get the next group that, that arrived from Amsterdam at 7.50, and then we just uh, we'll all connect at the hotel, get you all settled in, and then just have you ready and prepared for a nice uh, welcome into Ghana. So since that day, you know, since when we get there, it's going to be this coastal night. Uh, we won't do much, um, uh, but what we'll do is uh, we'll set things off the next day. 
So what we're looking to do is I head up to the mountains and we do have an orphanage slash school in the mountains. So if you have any school supplies, if you have anything you want to donate, give away, uh, we'll you know, bring them with you and then we'll just uh, give them out. So we always just uh, recommend everyone is get up early, do um, you know, do morning exercise, get yourself uh, going, uh, enjoy the uh, breakfast, which is usually open by seven. And then by 8.30, looking for everybody to be ready for us to take an hour drive up to the mountains um, and we're going to be in um, Avery. It's a beautiful part of the mountains where uh, even before you get there, uh, we're going to pass by the University of Ghana. And uh, we're either going to drive through there before we get up to the mountains or on the way back. And in between, uh, you have uh, this historical places. You have Rita Molly Studio, which is not, um, you know, which is not there anymore. It's, uh, it's a house has been sold to someone else. But you have the Rita Molly Foundation there and then our presence there in Avery. Uh, once you're up in the mountains, uh, the two highlights that we have is the wood carving village and also the uh, botanical uh, garden. The botanical garden is just a, a nature walk and wood carving village is a nature walk of just a whole lot of incredible wood carvings that uh, you you know you may be open to. All right, uh, later on uh, in the night, uh, that's when we're going to organize a nice welcome tropical uh, dinner and... Uh, get you a uh, welcome into Ghana you know all of us uh, will be uh, organized and ready at that time and we just uh, set this up as a welcome dinner welcome energy and just uh, you know connect and just uh, enjoy this a social night and for those who are open to you know for those who are open to you know, social nightlife and this uh, networking um, you know, we usually just uh, you know go out in the neighborhood in uh, Ghana and just uh, socialize for a little bit uh, so Nothing, um, you know, nothing big, uh, just, just keeping the energy social. Uh, day four, Sunday, July 14th, uh, that is the, um, that's, that's a connection that we have in uh, Ningo Prom Prom. Ningo Prom Prom era is where you have a lot of the African diaspora connections uh, uh, of people living there, building communities and, you know, and connecting. So I have uh, lots of good people there that I've uh, met over the period of time uh, from 2006 to uh, now. And so you'll meet some of them and uh, you meet up my good brother, Jerry Johnson, as we connect to the, uh, visit the uh, African ancestral wall with 90 portraits of our ancestors. Uh, so this is a nice uh, black power page um, as far as that page, uh, uh, black power wall, you see like the greatest of all time and people who have this, who have had great influence in this, uh, you know, keeping the energy strong as far as our connection to Africa and as far as just, uh, you know, freedom fighting. So always proud to just um, you know, take that walk. And for those who are not going to be able to handle that walk, it's all good. Uh, you can always stay up by the restaurant and just you know, and take your binoculars and do a binocular view or just um, you know, just relax and get something to drink and be social. I doubt it will be that hot like it has been in May when we travel, but at the same time, too, different people feel different ways about walking and you know, and. And uh, and heat, so you know it's your journey. So if you feel at any moment that you want to relax on the bus or go sit back or not to walk somewhere, it is all good. That's all you know. Basically, what I always tell everyone is pace yourself. And if it's some days or one or two days that you don't want to go out and you want to relax at the hotel, all good. We just uh, just give us a heads up that way we're not looking for you. All right, and on this day, uh, my goal is always just to get back a little earlier and just have a nice pool party energy and just relax, kick back at MJ Grand, absolutely, you know, and then get ourselves ready for dinner at MJ Grand, and then just uh, relax for the night. Uh, Monday, we're going to do our historical across city tour, and that's when we usually wear our T-shirt. Uh, I don't know what color it is or what we're going to get, but it's a nice pan-African energy, and that's when we go to all of the you know the uh, historical the historical sites and the uh, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park is uh it's new it's a new build. When we went there in Ghana, it was uh, in May last year. It was unbelievable. We had to look from the outside in, but it's completed now and it's been open to where we can actually just enjoy a nice park visit. So I want to make sure we have more than enough time to just enjoy it. And this is going to be some incredible recording. Uh, the presentation there is always powerful, and now there's a a welcome museum area. Uh, other historical parts are uh, Independence Square, uh, George Padmore uh, Library, W.E.B. Du Bois uh, Center, and then uh, we're going to do a lot of shopping there at the Arts and Culture Center. Uh, so once we get back, um, it's going to be a busy day, but once we get back, uh, we're going to enjoy dinner, and then from dinner, we're just going to make our way up to the business conference, which is just literally across 
uh, right there on the first floor uh, from the restaurant. So we make it very convenient while everybody's setting up and getting things going. We can just enjoy our dinner and then uh, make our way to the conference. And it's a nighttime session, so seven to nine, maybe maybe go just a little bit longer. And from there, we usually just network by the pool or just you know, go out socially down, you know, in one of the social areas uh, on the street. This is a very nice, beautiful, popular area, uh, East of Gone. And so the uh, business investment conference is mainly for educational purpose. And the goal is always to encourage and empower you to just be clear about getting involved in business um, and make sure you're clear about what you're doing and make sure you have the right path and the right support. You know, uh, We want everyone that's looking to build a future in Africa to be as successful as possible. And it's uh, not the simplest um, you know, market to deal with, but, um, you know, if you're game for it and you're willing to just learn from you know the people before you, uh, you you know, I have no doubt you can be uh, successful and then you band together and stick with your brothers and sisters from the African diaspora and understand that uh, uh, those are, you know, uh, our brothers and sisters in Africa and the continent, those are our brothers and sisters also. But at the same time, too, what I'm trying to explain to everyone and I just always be clear about it that, um, you know, don't run from the people that uh, came from the same place that you're from. Uh, look out for them uh, to seek and connect with you because it's that environment and it's the same situation wherever else you go in the world. Um, and, and, you know, we'll definitely get more into that, especially when I have different people from the business conference just kind of explain the real of how things are in the country and what makes someone successful and someone you know, a vision that what they're looking to build does fall apart. Uh, you know, it's very interesting. Um, so as you just build energy in the country, you know, your goal is just to make sure that uh, we do our best to guide everyone in the right direction. All right, then as we move forward, uh, day six, uh, Tuesday, July 16th, uh, Black Star Pan-African Community. So we're going to take a one and a half, two hour drive to Jahadzi in the central region by Winneba. And uh, we're going to just visit our Black Star Pan-African Community office and the 15 acres, take a look at the 60 acres, make our way down by the beach, drive through the town, and drive through the historical Winneba district, and also the Winneba uh, University, and then make our way to uh, Cape Coast, uh, Elmina. And if we have time, we'll drive to the next university, uh, which will be Cape Coast University. And uh, right now, they check into One Africa and Carrick Hotel, but um, yeah, we're working on a, a possible adjustment uh, for Coconut Grove. Uh, this kind of need to find out what they're looking to do there at One Africa. So, working on those, working on to where we have to make a move to Coconut Grove, which is an incredible resort. We'll do it, but our program has always been at One Africa. So, just trying to find out uh, updates on some of the things that are going on with them if they're gonna host us and then you know possibly close or if they're just gonna not be available. So trying to convince them so we can just do at least one last rendezvous and things like that. And hopefully uh, the new investors or whoever come through this, um, you know, make it nice and nicer. And we just keep the energy going. Uh, it's always an historical place there in Cape Coast. Elmina, or I should say, always an energetic place. Um, and uh, it's the story of this many of this uh, fallen ancestors, stolen African ancestors that was a uh, shipped across to the African diaspora. So it's uh, very tense and you know, especially when we make our way to Cape Coast, Elmina. Uh, and then you'll possibly be able to see also Elmina. Um, we, it's optional for those who want to go, especially if you don't want to do the canopy walk. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we usually just do one Holocaust dungeon. Uh, it's uh, very intense and you know it shakes uh, most people up. So try not to this put us through one after the next, which is what we used to do, um, which, but at that time in those days, uh, that was very necessary. But now we're just able to just focus on a, you know, an excellent program. We're just using one Holocaust dungeon and then make the connection when we go to the uh, last bath, Ascent Man, so, you know, connect that uh, energy also. Now, day seven, Wednesday, um, uh, Cape Coast African Holocaust dungeon, so we're gonna just uh, depart and depart after breakfast, and then just make our way. This presentation shouldn't be that long, and then looking to um, head back uh, for a naming ceremony in the evening. So those are some of the things that I'm working the final adjustments on, since you know, our location may possibly change. All right, uh, day eight. Uh, 
So sometimes I forget that <laughs> schools are always open in July. But they they ate uh, a coma academy. Uh, so what we usually do is let's get the uh, school supplies to the children since uh, by the time we get there this time, uh, the school would be in a summer break. So it's still the same thing too. We just usually just uh, work it out. All right, and uh, this originally was set for once we were finished uh, on this uh, day. Uh, once we go to the canopy walk and finish, we usually just go to Coconut Grove. But if we are set there already, you know, we can just enjoy a little pool party and just enjoy a kickback uh, there at Coconut Grove. But that's our itinerary schedule for Cape Coast Elmina. Uh, for those who just uh, burned out a little tired, uh, this would be a good day to relax. So good day to just relax and kick back, especially if you're not into you know, doing a canopy walk in the rainforest. Uh, I would never just uh, force anyone to do it. Um, I would just recommend that if you're athletic and uh, and you have the will, then you can make it through. Other than that, if you want to save yourself from hiking up um, into a forest and climb, climbing across several canopies that shake, uh, it's uh, all up to you. Uh, day nine, um, I send man. So, and also uh, when we go to the African Holocaust dungeons, uh, the colors are all white. Um, so just work your best uh, dress, uh, dress into this, put on as much uh, white as possible. And it's just an energy of solidarity. And that's when we go to the Cape Coast African Holocaust dungeons. Uh, day nine, uh, that's uh, send man. So this is the next ancestral day. So we're going to go to the Ancestor River Park, and this is where our ancestors were washed up and and given their last uh, bat before they auction off to Cape Coast Elmina or any of the neighboring dungeons. So you'll hear the the painful story of that um, that sequence, and uh, we, we'll connect with you as best as possible. And this is when we wear our colors of red, black, green, and gold to pay you know solidarity and energy to the uh, ancestors. And then this is also a point of return where you'll see three ancestors there. Um, so the presentation will talk about the ancestors, for one from Jamaica, one from uh, New York, and another from somewhere else. Uh, and as a matter of fact, once, I, once we get it this time, we'll, all of us will know because that's part of the, the new presentation, especially as um, Ghana get ready for Emancipation Day and get ready for you know the whole Panifest, uh, which will be going on right towards once we leave, which is not a bad thing because you know, we'll be able to just enjoy the presentation without being without several different groups being there at the same time. So I don't plan trips for what we do do uh, for Panifest. Uh, you know, it's we don't, I just like to just make sure that we have our own program and time to do our programs. So the last segments of the journey is we're going to head to Kumasi and we're staying at the Mikkelen Hotel in Kumasi. And that is a, a nice social place uh, in Kumasi, beautiful garden city. And um, a lot of historical and cultural uh, journeys there. The Mikkelen Hotel is a very close uh, area to the uh, city district. Uh, so we'll be enjoying pool parties there and also enjoying the social nightlife at places like Vienna cities and other social places. And also the, the schedule is a little more laid back so you'll be able to relax a little bit more. Uh, so uh, once we get there to uh, Kumasi um, on Friday, uh, July 19th, um, it should be about a, after I send Manso, which is, it takes an hour and a hour to get there. It's a four hour ride after that presentation. So you just, we'll just make our way up to Kumasi and, and uh, we'll have our dinner arranged and set uh, at the hotel. And then the next day we just get up and get ready for you know, a full day of shopping and cultural villages and culture centers, uh, basically for the next uh, two days on that weekend of uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so if you're looking for your best shopping, this is also a day for your best shopping. And uh, it also gives some laid back time before we head back to Accra on the 22nd and close out on our final dinner and then get everyone to the airport. All flights leave in the nighttime. So we'll get you there by seven o'clock and then all your flights will leave between uh, 10 to uh, uh, midnight. And then you just proceed to your uh, you know, your flight and then proceed to your connection flight after that. And uh, you know the journey comes to an end from there. And anybody looking to stay longer, you can always change your tickets. Uh, they're your tickets. Um, once you log into the airline's website, uh, they usually have options if you want to upgrade or change your tickets. All right, uh, so let me uh, proceed. Um, let me just go back to the top and 
let me proceed. Let me actually get to the uh, preparation page and I'll talk about the uh, airline tickets. So for the most part, um, if anyone have any questions or any trouble logging into the airline's website, um, uh, let me know. If you book on American and British Airways, the confirmation is, you may have one confirmation or two confirmation, but your confirmation number usually work the same, usually work for boat bookings. And if you have an issue and you need, need another confirmation number or something, just text, email me, and I'll get it to you. I want everyone to just be able to be clear on their flights before any last minute things. Um, the worst thing is when people call you actually about flights that uh, that everything is clear because I personally checked everything, uh, but you also, it's your name and your information. But also at the same time, too, there's things that you need to add, upgrade, or do. You may want to do it or request. Those are the things you may want to do ahead of time, especially like wheelchairs. Uh, if you need a special kind of meals and things like that. And just make sure you just get yourself organized to just make your way to the airport uh, four hours, uh, two, uh, two to four hours ahead of time. And most of the airline sequence should be the same. It should be the baggage allowance should be two bags at 50 pounds. Uh, if one or two people situation are different, um, I may not be clear on that, but um, that's uh, last I um, remember. And if you're doing seats, some seats may be complimentary, like example on American or Delta. But then when it comes to KLM and also British Airways, then you may have to pay for seats if you want seats ahead of time. So it becomes a situation where you can wait for seats to be assigned to you within 24 hours or when you check in, or you can just... Uh, pay for seats uh, all up to you and then paying for your seats or upgrade and give you a chance to find something more comfortable based on what you're looking to do but those are the things that's uh, not included all right I'm going to click on the uh, preparation list and just go through the preparation list all right and uh, before I go to uh, the preparation list I'm going to stop and see if anyone have any questions. All right, so family, yeah, that's the last uh, thing that uh, we have to go to uh, that's uh, full. But I want to see if anyone have any questions or if anyone have anything that they want to share or talk about before I go through the uh, preparation details. Well, Manny, my question is about um, vaccines, but maybe that is on your preparation list? Uh, yes, sir, there's no vaccination requirement. Uh, if you have a yellow fever card, definitely require recommend you bring it. Um, and it's something that um they're not gonna they may ask for you to show it, uh, but it's not something that they're gonna stop you from going into the country. But that's uh one of the only things that um may be requested of you, no COVID nineteen or anything else. And then for those who are open to vaccination, uh, just uh check with your doctor on what uh, you should get or what they recommend, or you and your person that you trust with your life have a conversation. But uh, beyond that. Uh, we don't have any uh, vaccination that you have to have uh, in order for you to make the journey and get into okay. the Okay. So, Bob, you're uh, saying, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, thanks. You're saying that we don't need any vaccine. What about yellow fever? Yes, if you have a yellow fever card, I'll bring it. Uh, but the, I don't have one. Yeah, so, Do we have to get the shots? If you want to get it, uh, you get it. I can't like, tell people to get shots of things because, especially when I know you're gonna, you can walk into the country and you don't have to have have it. Uh, so it's a health and you know health and safety thing. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you don't have one, no problem. Uh, you'll be able to get in. If you want, if you have one, bring it. Uh, and if you want to take the shot, uh, it's all up to you. Um, okay. It just uh, it becomes a little tricky when I have to talk about. Health and wellness information on a uh, reporter called uh, I have on YouTube. I don't want to be held. Oh, okay. Okay. I understand. That's why we always recommend that you talk to someone that you trust with your life. But you have to travel with us to the country. Um, um, there's no, like at one point it was COVID 19, but that was, and that was mandatory. Mandatory. If you didn't mm -hmm. throw them your card, they wouldn't let you let you in the country. Okay. You fever, um, it's no big deal. Okay. Thank you. And, so, well, my, my question is this. So, they may ask you to show uh, show a yellow fever card. You don't have to show anything else, do you? That you got any other shots or anything, do you? Show me a passport and show them a tip and then keep it moving. You'll be good. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, because at this point, at this point, um, you know, we just said, uh, you know, I have a psychological situation. I'm still dealing with uh, a friend of mine. She's just out of commission. She took the yellow fever and the COVID nineteen like almost back to back, and uh, this was like a few years ago. Now she was uh, taking our group to Ghana, and um, she never made it there, and she's still like in a whole different world. So. Uh, I mean, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't advise her to take it or anything like that. But that's what she did. So these things are, these things are, these things are very scary. So especially if you end up telling someone to do certain things and affect their health and wellness, that's why I'm the way I'm sometimes when we have these conversations. But and anybody who wants to talk to me directly on the phone, you can just always just talk to me directly. But that's the best as I can share, honestly, in a recorded call. Okay, I have another question. Um, it concerns the online application. So when I do the online application, I have to print it and send it physically with the passport, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. And a okay. separate passport style photo. Okay. Um, so I don't, I, I can't upload it. I can't submit the passport online, not the application online. So once you fill the application out online uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it give you an option to print it out. So the application will be completed online, but you still have to send it in. Okay. And then also the passport, uh, you will have to upload mm -hmm. the passport page and the signature page, but you still okay. have to send it in. And the same okay. thing, you have passport style photo. Okay. And it's also, um, it's recommended that you pay for the uh, shipping label. That way they can send you your passport back. Uh, okay. And, um, it's a one day uh, return. Um, so it's, Kind of okay. price at twenty nine dollars, uh, but that's the process that they have to the end. And then they also just offer the option for expedited visa payment uh, at uh, about two hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. When you're doing those things, uh, you can definitely call me, reach out to me, and I'll make sure okay. that it's good and you get it done uh, in the next uh, day or two. Okay. Thank you. Uh, definitely. Uh, you're welcome. I have a question, and I know that you can't discuss, you know, as far as the vaccinations. Um, I was curious because I did find them in Jacksonville, but they are at $400 a piece, and some of the side effects don't look um, palatable, to, to say the least. I just want to make sure that we're not the only ones walking in without this vaccine. I mean, most of us have uh, have the uh, have it, uh, but uh, it's a usual situation. Uh, but you know, again, uh, again, they'll tell you the you know, again, Ghana will recommend that you um, get yellow fever, and it's something that I mean, they're not going to put you back on a flight and send you back. So that's the only thing I can tell everyone to just trust me with it, and I'm there, right there. So you can always text, uh, call me uh, if, in case of any emergency. I'll be right there uh, with you. So, so I got you on that. So let's just flow. Yeah, I got the flow of it. It's uh, the same process of what we've been doing over the, the last um, eighteen years traveling to Ghana, and uh, so uh, just get everything else ready, and y'all be good. And then if you can get access to a yellow fever waiver, you can always bring that also. And then how, would you, how would you get a waiver? Uh, if you're allergic to certain medications, and if you're allergic to certain if you're allergic to certain things and if you're if you just have issues with vaccination as long as the doctor write it off write it for you. but those are the, those are some of the options and and the best options i have to deal with the, the whole yellow fever thing uh beyond that um let me know if anyone else have any questions and i'm going to go through the preparation list Romani is stating her couple of quick questions. Uh, sure. Do you have any general guidelines for clothing? Uh, I know you mentioned we did need to bring a white outfit, but anything else generally for clothing? Uh, let's make it sound as comfortable as possible. We're having a business conference. Also, we're going out socially and we're also going out for dinner. So casual clothes um, and maybe some, we have a little bit of everything. Um, you know, we have pools, we have access to the ocean. Uh, swimwear. Uh, we're climbing up, um, climbing to a forest. Uh, proper footwear, and um, yeah, so a little bit of everything for about twelve days. Okay, gotcha. All right. And you you mentioned something about uh, school supplies. Uh, uh, what should we be prepared to bring for the school supplies? Uh, you can bring some you know, some pens, um, calculators, just uh, basic stuff that's not 
uh, too heavy in your bag. And just anything that you want to share from your heart, if you want to uh, give financial donations, you can also do that. Okay. All right. The second question, maybe you're going to cover it later. Later, that's about the currency exchange. How uh, how should we handle that? Uh, once you get to Ghana, I'll have someone with us, and uh, he'll exchange your money uh, from uh, U.S. dollars to local currency. What I recommend is everyone bring big bills, 50s and 100s, because you'll get a better exchange rate than if you were to give the, them 20s and 10s and 5s, and then sometimes they don't accept 1s. Uh, but it's a country that's a cash-carrying country that's based on their local currency. Uh, so you can use your card at restaurants and things like that, but uh, when, when you're out there in the streets, and you're out there shopping and vending. It's not like in Brazil where everybody got a one of those portable credit card machines as vendors. Uh, everybody's looking for uh, their local currency cash. And they will take American dollars, but you always lose when once uh, someone takes US dollars from it from you because they'll always give you a lower exchange rate. Now, how much money do you think is, is appropriate American money to bring? Uh, anywhere from four to eight hundred dollars, five to a thousand dollars, depends on what you're shopping. And depends on how much you plan on or looking to do. What's the temperature there at that time? Uh, yes, uh, you're looking at about um, 75 to uh, 85 degrees. Thank you. Um, Bomani, are we going to be responsible for lunch each day? Uh, yes, every day we'll go somewhere nice and we'll just, uh, order your lunch if you want lunch. Okay. Um, what's the ballpoint figure for the duration of our time for lunch? Uh, lunch is about 10 15 US dollars, depends on what you're ordering. All right, thank you. And then it's um about thirty. Minutes. Usually we break for lunch. Um, usually about anywhere from hour and a half to two hours, and just relax and kick back, and then do our next tour segments, and then close out for the day. And then we usually have dinner around seven o'clock uh, every night. Um, for the most part, it's usually at uh the restaurant, at the hotel, and then one or two nights uh we'll go out. Is the agenda set right now, or will are you going to tweak it a little more? Um, not much really to tweak. Um, it's uh that's about it, right? That's the uh the schedule that we have. Okay. Uh, once I get ready to do the book, I'm not going to make any corrections. Anything that doesn't flow or look off, you know, I'll just uh, edit and change those things. That way, when uh, that way, I'm ready to publish the book. It has all corrections and all of the updated schedule, flight schedule, and times and things like that. But um, it's um as finalized as possible, with the exception of the Cape Coast Elmina. Uh, I just have to see what One Africa wants to do, or what they're gonna do. Uh, but but in that case, I uh, the, the hotel will be upgraded. It wouldn't be downgraded. It'll be a better senior in situation. So we're always open to doing those things at the last minute if we can. But outside of that, uh, I tell basically our set, especially with the flow and the day-to-day -day and all of the sites that we're going to visit. Okay. So, Bomani, did you say we have to pay for our own food? Your own lunch. Just lunch. Okay. Yes. Then okay. also, what about the power to charge our phones and stuff like that? We need to get a, a, a transformer to, tra to convert the power. I'll bring you just a universal um, adapter and extension uh, extension uh, cord, and then you'll be fine. Okay. And what about distilled water? Is it that very uh, easy to get? What kind of water? Distilled water? Yes. Uh, that like uh, they'll sell them in more of the uh, fancy uh, supermarkets, so. Where we where we are, you'll be able to get access to one of the malls or a supermarket in the area. So that's no problem. Uh, we can get um, Java to take you there. Okay. okay. Right, and while we're talking, uh, what I have up is the uh, preparation list, which I always recommend everyone go through. And some of the things I'm just going to go through real quick. Uh, number one, all it talks about is that uh, all of the Ghana tour information is right here on this uh, tour link. 
to uh, talk about the gratuities, which is $100 per person, and that's put towards the staff, crew, and all of the uh, the people that assist, help us move around the country and provide entertainment for us and just assist us in uh, general from the beginning to the end of the uh, journey. Uh, and again, uh, for those who are bringing U.S. dollars, recommend you bring $100 bills and 50s. So also when you're doing the tips, I recommend us bring 50 or 100 because we're going to exchange it out. That way we can local, local currency to uh, move around with. Right. All right, so that is uh, one and two. Um, and again, I recommend everyone take their time and read through this. It's right there on the website. It's been on there from the uh, beginning and the, all the files are usually up there at one time, mm -hmm. right at the beginning when we put the uh, tour details up. And this, as time go along, we do make one or two adjustments, which is just corrections or things that may just be worded a little better. Uh, number three, uh, when you come uh, to visit, do not romanticize. Uh, do not uh, come with a romanticized notion about Ghana and Africa, or you will be disappointed and unnecessarily frustrated. Mm -hmm. Come with an open eyes. What does that mean? A lot of time, people come with a mindset. Not a lot of time, but sometimes someone may come with a mindset of thinking that uh, they, you know, that the environment that they live in. Say, example, um, if you live in, you know, if you live in New York City, they may have the mindset that um, everywhere else that I'm going to. I'm gonna get the same everything when I get there. And it's just, the reality of it is yes, I have to be this open to how our country is. Ghana is a very modern African nation uh, with a lot of history and culture, but it's not like anywhere we come from. Some aspects of it may be simple or uh, similar. And then when it comes to customer service and relations and things like that, and how airports move, you know, you definitely see the difference. So you're just telling everyone that's to come in this, go with the flow as best as possible. You spend your money on the journey. Don't let uh, certain things just frustrate you that you can just ignore or just uh, kind of just let it go or don't pay it any mind and things like that. All right. Uh, and um, I've worked on making sure that uh, we don't have any ven vendors bombarding us and things like that. So um, the hotel will be given the heads up, especially when I get there up front and let them know that uh, I don't need anyone harassing our guests or trying to sell them a dream of that they're going to be their wife or husband or whatever the situation is. I get tired of dealing with people calling me complaining that uh, someone tricked them or lied to them or whatever. It's just getting to the point where uh, when folks are grown, they just got to work things out because uh, I'm not a psychologist or a therapist and things like that. Uh, but People are going to lie to you. They're going to sell you a dream and tell you certain things. And I don't know what else to honestly tell people. Uh, it's I have people that they're, they're still living that lie and that dream. Uh, but it's up to us as an individual to decide what you want to do. If you want to take care of someone and their family and you want to give donations and things like that every month and let someone just con you into feeling like they love you and things like that. So, you know, if you need any advice, I'll always definitely help you. But uh, do realize that you're going to be around people that, uh, you know, are going to like you, are going to say certain things to you. And, uh, you know, if you need my advice, you can always pull me to the side and ask me if this person's trying to run game on you. And I'll say yes up front before I, you know, I even hear the story. But uh, just be mindful of uh, people that uh, does that. It's been too many situations and I'm drained of hearing about them. Uh, honestly, uh um, so, um, and then when you get to the country, uh, for the most part, there's um, some of the drainage is not covered. So I definitely want everyone to be mindful of walking and moving around. I uh, just don't want to hear about anyone falling, slipping or hindering themselves. Um, so those are some of the things that, you know, I want you to look out for. And then when we get there to the country, our tour guide would also explain these things and go over certain things as far as moving around. When you're moving in places like um, shopping areas and things like that, just make sure you keep your phones and make sure you keep your money close to you uh, in a secure position and things like that. And naturally, we have, we'll be walking in a flow to where we look out and things like that. But um, and that's one of those things when you go anywhere and you move in a crowded place, you want everyone to know about pickpocketers and things like that. And for the most part, we're on a bus moving and we're moving in places where we're not, it's not very crowded and we're kind of moving along with each other, along with our, our crew. Uh, but nevertheless, that's something that I still want to uh, share with you so you're clear. 
All right, so, but uh, definitely, you know, it's a fun, wonderful country, uh, but, you know, you, have, you do have to take precautions on certain things and not get too just, like, in la-la land and, you know, in, in things like that. Uh, everyone is going to be very, very nice and very welcoming and accommodating, uh, but it is tourism, uh, so you definitely expect that. Um, whether certain people mean certain things and they're being too nice to you, that is something that you have to figure out and just, just kind of just, you know, kind of just keep your mind you know, focus on what's going on and things like that. And then also when we exchange the money, we'll explain how the, the value of the money works. That way you're not spending too much and it just goes by. All right, uh, number four, Delta Airlines, uh, American Airlines, British Airways, uh, KLM, uh, all these are the websites that um, you should uh, check your tickets on. Uh, if you're booked on American, for the most part, uh, all of your sequence, once you log in, you click on the uh, part and you click on return. It'll show all your sequence of your flights. And the same thing for Delta. And uh, with Delta, if you don't see certain segments on your Delta booking, then you have to go log into KLM with the same uh, link. So those are the things that you know, I want everyone to just be clear about so you could be prepared. And let me just go through the rest of these fast. Number five. Wait a minute. Uh, Bolani, do we get the uh, frequent flyer miles for our trip? Uh, did you log into the airlines yet? Uh yeah, I already got my tickets. Uh did, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did you, did you log into Delta.com? Yeah, so everyone, uh, once you uh once you log into yeah. Delta.com, yeah. if you want to uh if you have frequent flyer mileage, you can uh add them to your booking on the uh, airlines, just like you can do seats, uh request meals. So those are the things that I want everyone to focus on. Uh that way you're clear and then you want to make sure your name is spelled correct and make sure the routes look good on the booking on the actual website of the airlines because mm -hmm. number one flights do change and if you're looking at what was booked originally and then something changed then you're put yourself in a situation and uh that happened to one of the associate one of the hosts that was traveling to liberia with us uh, mm -hmm. and you know so this is one of the things i'll tell you buddy and hopefully and most people don't do it but please let's log into the airlines website and this, it's your open booking to do all your your setup. Uh, the tickets are confirmed; they're paid in full. It'll show you a ticket receipt also. Mm -hmm. and, and everyone, you just please access as accept ownership of the ticket. So if you need to do anything, um, you can also change your change the contact name. The contact name and information may be mine, but you can change it to yours and mm -hmm. uh, keep up with it. And, and okay, good. Yes, but uh, wait a minute, let me know if you have any. Right? Uh, other questions on that? No, that's that. Thank you, you've answered that. And perfect. And five and six, let's make sure that you have all your information and printed out all your ticket details. Make sure your passport uh, is uh, good. Make sure your visa is good. Make sure all your things are arranged and organized and ordered. That way, when you go to the counter, everything looks good and you can just proceed. And then make sure, now seven, make sure you just arrive two to four hours ahead of time. Give yourself enough time to just be organized and ready. Uh, Ada talk about check bags. Uh, it's two check bags uh, for the two airline segments that we're using, and then carry on is um one small you know usually what I carry is a backpack and then a small roll on bag. Uh, so that's your two carry on, and for those who are looking to carry extra bags, check bags, uh, then you're looking at a possible extra one hundred to two hundred dollars, or I should say one hundred for overweight bags, and two hundred for extra um for extra bag. Hmm. What's the weight for uh, the thing? Uh, number 10, uh, when packing. Okay. Uh, yes, it's uh, 50 pounds for each bag. And uh, number uh, 10, uh, when packing this, um, I would just recommend pack uh, things that if you want to um, give things away, just pack the things that you want to give away. And then when you give them away, you will have uh, more space in your bag. So you can also work it like that. And then you can also, once again, just purchase um, extra bag or just extra space, which is basically overweight bags, which at this point, uh, if your bags are overweight, might as well just pay for extra bag. Uh, 11, we talk about bringing a set of red, black, green, and gold, and also a set of our whites uh, for Ancestor Day 1 and 2. Uh, 12, uh, school supplies is um, for orphanage and schools, and this is just things like um, books, bags, paper, pencil, calculators, clothing, and also we're collecting our black doll babies for the young children in the school programs and orphanage. And the reason why we say our black dolls is uh, because a program of this uh, is this, we're trying to get our children to be connected more to 
uh, appreciate and love themselves and have dolls and have things that are image of them. So if you have books that's empowering, educational, encouraging, talk about um, you know, those things, it's uh, beautiful. Um, it always encourage those things because the psychology is crazy of just the mindset of just, and you know, you only know what you know and what you're around in your environment, uh, which affects you. So that's one of the things you're going to always just get from me as a person that's um, pushing the, encouraging our generation of children to be empowered with, with love uh, for their roots, culture, and themselves, and love for their skin complexion, love for the beauty of just being Black. And I would just never back down from that. It's just because I've seen the damage that's done when when you become a self-hating person and hate who you are and things like that. And it starts by having things that don't reflect your empowerment. So that was a program. Uh, all these are programs I built when I first started going to Ghana and just trying to figure out how do you build a connection in Africa that's real and that's going to stand the test of time and a connection that's going to change things over a period of time and not just, you know, so, and then, you know, you'll hear more about some of these things we talk about when we talk about jihad, jihad, there's an orphanage there, definitely want that to be one of the highlights in our future to where we have a, a young uh, energy, where we recruit a young technical energy of students there that will learn all the uh, technical and business uh, things that we'll do right there in the technology and business uh, center in the community, uh, you know, which is just our future move. Uh, so looking to uh, empower a generation of, uh, you know, young black uh, technicians. And um, and normally when you live in that uh, area, like a Jahadzi, it's um, not much going on. And for those who have the opportunities, you know, you're gone in Accra, you're gone somewhere else. Uh, so it's a town for the children. And that's part of our commitment. Uh, when we committed to the chief, as far as us uh, acquiring the land, you know that we wanted to just, you know, be a you know, be a part of the future and be a part of uh, bringing development there and uh, creating opportunities for the children there. So definitely always open to anyone who have good grant writers, who have good folks who can work certain things. Uh, I've been I've been sold many dreams over and over, but uh, I'm still hopeful that uh, we'll get some people that will help us write some uh, programs um, and just help us bring some. You know, some energy and support to the village and then ultimately people who can help us bring some industries and you know, when you go into the town you're going to love the town it's a beautiful town and it's um yeah you know, we're going to transform it and we're going to make it uh you know make it into a, our, our nice uh, jamaica town and you know it's nothing personal to anybody else is just looking to use the the vibes the energy of uh, our culture and upbringing and this um, you know, flood the place of mango trees. This the the vibe that you get when you go to Jamaica. And, you know, trees everywhere, and you just have that tropical feeling when you go to the beach. The beach is set up to where it's entertainment and things like that. The beach that we have there is just it's dead, and uh, we'll work it out to where you know we'll get all the trash picked up and cleaned up. But uh, that's uh, what you're gonna see there is it's uh, uh, me and my partners and all of the community investors. Uh, it's a lifetime dream, and we're gonna make it work and it's been it's been challenging over the few years uh from the era because the whole time we've been doing it this was the whole COVID era so you know you just do as much as you can do honestly and I've told people that you know you one or two houses get built and another one or two some portion of the roads get done you take care of this you take care of that you bring in some new people to assist you and you make it work but uh when we share it with you it'll be our humble sharing of our town and you know and even our office, and we'll let you know this is where we are, and we're building from there. But obviously, you know, uh, we need assistance because it's a big project. It's not like these people in my county who they just clear 15, 20 acres of land, and next thing you know, you turn around a few months later, you have a whole city, and they have all of the resources and things in place. So that makes it work. But nevertheless, uh, that's you know, that's something I was sharing with people because we never know who's traveling with us and who we may meet and who may know who and things like that. So we try to share our humble blessings of what we're doing and the future of just building something for our family, our brothers and sisters, and just uh, people who have the same like minds of us to build a pan-African town. All right. Right, so 13, uh, we talk about the meet and greet, so I'm going to skip. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Go Good ahead. Question. Books are very heavy. So if, we, um, if we're if we not going to bring them with us, can we send them afterwards? I'm sure you can get the, um, the shipping information from a place if you want to do that. And you don't have to bring anything heavy, like a um, heavy textbook. Uh, it could be a 20-page book on on this um 
why you should love your black African roots. <laughs> no, I understand that. But as a teacher, I can tell you when I have to pack up at the end of the year, the boxes with the books are always the heaviest. Yes, I absolutely I understand that. So I'm saying to anyone who wants to ship two, three barrels or a container, it, it's all good. But I'm but what I'm recommending is this anyone that could bring whatever they can bring, bring. And if you can and I definitely recommend when you deal with school supplies, more on the lighter side. And then for those who want to bring financial donations, that will always uh help because when you're dealing with the schools and orphanage, you know, there's you know, there's other things that they need also, you know, uh some maintenance and also uh, the, the school the school uh, that you're going to visit in the mountains, um, you'll see where the donation go, uh, went because uh, they keep building more buildings and keep just working on it, which on this, which is, you know, what you're always proud to see. You know, we just start from nothing and just build up little by little. And then the more we support each other, it just grows. So it's a place I've been going to for a good um, 17 years and it's, it has transformed and, um, and, um, they, they've done a lot with our help. So it's something for us to also be proud that we've been able to help our own brothers and sisters uh, elevate and, and, you know, be able to this help, help, you know, help themselves to help themselves, help them to help themselves at the same time. All right. So let me stop in the middle of uh, where we at, where we at 13. So let me know if anyone have any questions about anything that I've talked about before on this list. All right. So, I was gonna say um uh, thirteen uh that's the um, meet and greet um and I think that's the one I didn't fix correct anyway uh this portion with meet and greet and set up those things will be sent via WhatsApp and sent uh, to where everyone will be able to just know who they're gonna connect with and then ultimately and explain the details of when um you're walking out the entrance of Ghana so those are the things that uh will. Close out on those things uh, like the last two weeks as I finalize um, all those uh, things. So, but beyond that, all of your tickets are set for you to all be, um, you know, all be on, you know, be in London at a, you know, at least two hours before the flight, and in um, Amsterdam two hours before the flight. So you all be in a specific gate and location. And so once we all introduce ourselves with pitches and things like that, then we'll talk about where we're going to be at. Uh, we'll, we'll do one of those sessions where we post our photo and how we look and where we're going to be at. And then, you know, we can easily meet up with each other and this kind of, and may, it may not work out for everyone, but uh, at least most of us will be able to see and connect with each other. And then ultimately, you know, that night when we all meet, that's orientation night. We'll all talk, connect, and uh, get ourselves prepared. All right, let uh, me speed through this process. Uh, 14, bring any necessary medicine that you may need, that might need. So just think about you traveling and moving around and the things that you've needed in the past. Uh, 15, uh, cameras, camcorders, bring extra film or memory cards, rechargeable batteries. If you have electronics, bring a converter or a foreign adapter or what I would say, just bring a universal extension cord and a universal adapter that you can plug into the wall with a universal uh you now with a universal adapter and then connect your extension cord. And for the most part, the extension cord, you're looking at something that's going to have dual uh, voltage, basically. And a built-in converter, or I should say built-in converter. So those are things you can just get from Amazon or from your electronic stores. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, if you want to use the local Ghana SIM card, you can bring an unlock phone and then we can get you to get you a Ghana, get a Ghana SIM card fee so you can have Ghana phone service and which allows you to use the internet also. But um, you can, for those uh, who are looking for internet options, uh, you can pay for internet through your phone carrier that's called T-Mobile or Verizon or AT&T, whoever you deal with, and they'll set you up with an international plan. Or if you just want to deal with the Wi-Fi at the hotel, you can just connect to the Wi-Fi and use the Wi-Fi at the hotel and use your WhatsApp. Uh, but once we're out there in the middle of nowhere driving for five hours, uh, you won't have any connection. And then um, another option is um, you can use you know, the Ghana phone. You'll be able to have Ghana service and you'll be able to use your internet and you'll be able to set up your Ghana phone with a mobile hotspot that you can use on your US phone or your laptop. So these are all different technical ways for you to get it worked out. But I definitely recommend just paying your phone carrier here and then you'll be able to just use your roaming so you can make your phone call on your internet. And some carriers are five dollars, and then some on more on the crooked side. I want to charge you ten dollars for internet. That you know that is gonna work just okay. 
but it's going to be better than uh, whatever the hotel is offering. Cool. All right, number 16, uh, travel. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead, Don. When Someone has a question. You're saying as we're, as we're traveling, we won't have any service at all, or... Yeah, what I'm that. saying to you is that uh, you have a U.S. phone, so if you use your U.S., if you take a U.S. phone anywhere in the world, it's not going to work. So if you want your U.S. phone to work, you have to talk to your carrier and pay for one of their international plan, which is usually five to ten dollars a day. Beyond that, your next option is you can just connect to the Wi-Fi at the hotel, and but that would also limit you. So that's what I'm just recommending. Uh, I can't tell anyone how to spend their money, uh, but. Uh, I have people that travel with me. They act like they're scared of Roman. If you paid this, they're scared of Roman. But me personally, I need my, I need my, I need access to my phone calls, and you know, I never know when I may get that special phone call, uh, or get those phone calls that you're always working for. So it's up to you, um, with the internet. But that's what I would recommend. Uh, this get um international, international plan. But uh, Arlene, I don't know if that sounds good to you. No different than going to Europe. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> so yes, so, so yes, family, exactly. No different from when you go to other parts of the world and things like that. So I know a lot of the stuff is that basic, but uh, for um, you know, we still have to go over it. Um, because um, trust me, people, someone is gonna say that we didn't tell them any of these things. Um, but um, but yeah, this is all part of preparation. So we just try our best to just make sure you're clear and you're ready. Uh, 16, travel iron, alarm clock, plastic bags, compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and convenient accessories. It is the rainy season, so umbrellas and waterproof poncho is uh, definitely recommended. And uh, you can, Africa for the Africans bag that you'll get, you can put those things in that bag. Uh, 17, mosquito spray or repellent, uh, cinchonella oil is, is excellent. Or just anything that you may find that you may want to use with little to no chemicals that's not going to like wear you out or cause, you know, certain things. So find the healthiest thing that you can use. 18, um, you can use the calculator on your phone for this basic exchange. You can bring a separate calculator. But again, bring 150s and, and then the exchange rate, um, I can never keep up with it. It's more close to 1 to 15. Uh, so for 100 US dollars, you'll get 150 uh, Ghana. Sorry. For 100 US dollars, you get 1,500 of the uh, Ghana money called CDs. And uh, not 19, you have access to ATM machines if you need some uh, local currency because ATM machines only give you local currency and it will be converted to a, through your bank. But the recommendation is still four to $800 and you can bring any cards and all, and we're in, I mean, Kumasi and Accra, you have plenty of access to AT machines. Uh, you're a little more limited in Cape Coast, Elmina, but pace yourself uh, and you know, make sure you have what you need ahead of time. But we do our best to give you get you access to anything you need to deal with money as far as money exchange or AT machines on a daily basis, or at least every other day. Uh, 20, uh, the weather is going to be this nice, like in you know, tropical Jamaica, but it also is the rainy season, so it may be a little cooler. Uh, so just you know, bring you a jacket um, when you know you're gonna be on them cold flights anyway. So you know you still definitely want to make sure you bring you a jacket or something to make sure you're comfortable. Um, and again, the rain the raincoat or waterproof poncho will help in case of an emergency. But uh, for the most part, we're gonna be on a nice bus to where we shouldn't be getting it rained out. Uh, 21, uh, just be mindful of photos and videos in airports because some of these securities are the characters. Um, and, uh, but um, for the most part, um, I just want everyone to just be mindful and clear so you don't just start taking pictures and videos in front of certain places and certain people. Uh, uh, 22, um, uh, we do not have a tour insurance uh, included or travel insurance included, but there's this link for Alliance Travel. That's what um, you know, it's one of the recommended companies. And then you can use any other company that you want. And uh, th 23, uh, toiletries including tissues, uh, napkins, wet wipes, facial tissues, uh, washcloth, beach towel, um, laundry soap, uh, any basic stuff. This, those are some of the recommendations. 24, um, one of my favorite one. Ghanaians are very friendly. However, be wary of people who just want to make quick money off you and make promises they cannot keep. Uh, you should know as much as possible about people you are planning to do business with. And trust me again, you're going to run into people that want to sell your dreams. But 
if you just tell them about themselves, then you have nothing to worry about. If you feed into it, then that's when they work you, work you, work you. This, and then if someone keeps on bothering you and you're telling them no, let's come and get me, and I'll get make sure that person get gone uh, by one way or another. Whether it's getting security or whether me and my guys throwing that person out. Uh, this I don't have time, and for anyone to. Uh, Take advantage of the people that you work hard to get open to traveling to Africa just for them to see the foolishness and things like that. So um just keep me posted if um you know someone is stressing you out or or trying to just um you know, because I can't not I, I can't see everything. And if you're buying something from someone, I don't know what lies they're telling you. And I'm not trying to be hard and anything because that's when people say you're so hard sometimes on people, but I didn't survive this long as a military man in this uh business I buy this uh putting up with people foolishness and taking uh, and, and playing games. So you may see many people in videos and things and videos in the past with people on staff. Uh, none of those people will be on this tour, uh, be all new people. And I feel great about what we have changed over because after a while you got to rotate the tide of, you have to rotate the situation because you know, after a while you end up giving people too much time to start being too laid back and cool with you and keep playing games with you. So, you know, you just got to keep rotating. I have no problem with doing that and things like that. And I'm also encouraging anyone that work with us that, you know, take the opportunity to learn and then build, you know, work on build something for yourself. But um, unless, uh, you know, there's someone that we can really build with, you know, and if you're going to keep pushing your own agenda, you know, we're just going to move forward from you. So that's what we end up dealing with. And you know, I'm a very nice guy. Uh, so people think that, um, you know, we just cool like that until, you know, I have to let them know, hey, you know, we have business to run. Uh, so, right, uh, uh, 25 games for Legion, including social gathering, deck of cards, dominoes, chess, general board games. So, you know, for those nights uh, when we uh, when we out there in uh, Cape Coast, Elmina, in this tropical piece and we may not go out much, we just, you know, we stay out there in the um, the uh, lounge or in the outside area and we just uh, socialize and, you know, play some board games uh, for those who are open. Uh, 26 uh, emergency items, uh, flashlight, basic first aid kits, uh, laxative, Pepto-Bismol, um, and a few things I can't even pronounce, uh, anti-diarrhea, um, and just any kind of emergency thing that you may need. Uh, 27, uh, please, uh, another favorite of mine, please uh, focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Do not get distracted by any other people or anyone else and get caught up into complaining. This is an experience that will have its ups and downs, and it's also part of your introduction to Ghana, such Africa. Uh, we recommend always that you go with the flow and just enjoy your time in paradise around this wonderful itinerary that we have put together for you. Uh, so all of us are coming from different places, and some of us know each other, and some people don't. Uh, but you're there to just enjoy yourself and focus on what you're doing, and uh, don't just you know do your best to just um, you know, stay focused and don't get distracted, because. Uh, um, and you know, different people are going to be into what they're into and what they do and things like that. Uh, so, you know, learn to just let certain things go and keep focus. Once again, 28, no COVID-19 or vaccination requirement. Um, anything that you want recommended to you, definitely talk with your doctor or someone you trust with your life. Uh, 29, uh, when you get to baggage claim in uh, Ghana, get your free uh, card and put and put uh, put only your bags on it, and make sure you have uh, all your check bag receipts uh, from when you check your bags uh, from your departure uh, airport. Uh, these numbers are needed to match because the uh, security is going to check to make sure you're not taking anybody else's bag. All right, and do not let anyone push your cart while proceeding to the bus, uh, which is sometimes I know is difficult because everybody's so nice in Ghana and they all want to help you, um, you know, and things like that. So. Um, uh, it's uh just depends if you need help um you need help but uh for the most part um once your stuff is on the cart it's an easy push uh right there to the bus the bus will be right there directly outside all right so once everybody get their bags together all of us will meet in the middle of baggage claim and then uh we're just gonna all proceed out and then um we have our people ready to just uh, guide us to the bus uh thirty uh the last uh thing that I have is Bring things to the Holocaust dungeons like several candles and light uh, different uh, one in different dungeons or just anything that will keep you, uh, keep the moment special. Some people have 
uh, ashes they may want to pour, they may want to put a picture of their ancestors, or just anything that uh, someone may want to do. This is a time to connect with your ancestors, connect with uh, the spirit of just, you know, our connection to African diaspora and uh, the origin of our connection. So these are all things that you know, I have on the list to share, and you can always just think of other things to get you prepared. But the goal is just to process uh, preparation. And then before that, we talk about the itinerary. So those are the main things that want to go over. And then on the website, when you go scroll down, you'll see all of our multiple playlists. Uh, that's um, of the, all of the tours that we've taken. And what you'll see is every single Ghana tour. With, some have more videos than others, uh, but uh, it's the same sequence. You just see us moving from starting the journey, throughout the journey, and uh, just saying closing out. Uh, so if anyone ever wanted to see the feel of how we move, how we look, how we dress, how we, you know, what we do, and, the, you know, you'll see a little bit of every aspects of life in Africa. Um, the last uh, two journeys before, the last two journeys last year, uh, we ended up doing a nice safari, one in our, one in, uh, you know, one in Arusha and also one in uh, Palanisburg in South Africa. So that was interesting. And those videos are all up. Um, beautiful video, beautiful experience. So uh, it's just all things that we have on here to share. And then Facebook got a ridiculous amount of photos. But so family, I'm going to stop the uh, screen sharing and we'll open things up. So I wonder if anybody have any questions about anything I talk about. I wonder if anybody want to dialogue or want to go to details about anything that we've talked about now before we are closing in the next few minutes. I do have a question um, on the tips that we're giving for when we meet. Can I just sell that to you? Uh, yes, you can work that out ahead of time if you want. That's no problem. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yes, family. So it sounds like everybody it looked like everybody's excited and clear. So if you're excited and you're clear, I'm sure I've probably been here longer than I should have. But uh want to make sure that I did it for the record that we went through uh, the full preparation and the itinerary. Okay. Uh, okay. Before you go, um, we will. I will. Be, we will be calling you tomorrow. Um, Pam and Jasmine will be calling you tomorrow to have a conversation. So listen out for a call. Absolutely. I got Somewhere you. between eleven eleven thirty. 12 o'clock. All right, that's All perfect. Right. Appreciate that. Thank you. Looking forward Thank to you. Thank you. All right, um, Clifford, do you have a question? Uh, just unmute yourself. And well, I can say it's great presentation, though. It was good. <laughs> right. Man, looking forward to meeting you, man. Uh, it's been a while, man. I know yeah. we're trying to get you to Ghana a while back, and <laughs> this COVID 19 <laughs> is this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all those restrictions are gone, so now you'll be able to get there and just get a feel of it. That's yeah. right. Okay, so I, I have a question uh, about the uh, tour. I remember yeah. Greg Norman uh, was a part of one of the tours. Are we going to meet Greg Norman and find out yeah. something about his real estate venture? Will there be someone there that might? Uh, carry on a conversation with us about opportunities, financial opportunities? Uh, yes, 100%. Uh, uh, Craig Norman will be there available and uh, I'll be connecting with him along with a few other people uh, this month so we can get everything lined up and arranged uh, for the floor of our itinerary. And the same thing with uh, Jerry Johnson there. So you'll be able to see the house that they built and then the entire community. And then also you're going to be able to, we have a uh, three communities that uh, we're going to be sharing so trying to share more of just us working on community vision and um yeah so group uh, you know group economics group empowerment very good yes definitely all right so family before we close again anyone has in, in does anyone have any questions i know we've gone through a whole lot and hopefully that everything is clear well money uh, yes. Let's see on. Um, I recommend that to bring snacks with you, a lot of snacks. So you have something to snack on in between lunch. And oh. also um, malaria tablets. You need a prescription for those. 
Um, yeah, you go to your doctor. It's not that expensive. And you just pick it up at the pharmacy. There you go. It's pretty cheap. It's about $3. <laughs> I paid last year. <laughs> well, you got to get a, maybe they gotta get a prescription. You need a prescription for it. For yes. what? What is, what, what is it? Malaria tablets. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I I I uh, I got them uh, whenever mm -hmm. we went uh, to Africa before, and I got them at Broward Health, and I forget what exactly what it is, but they're not expensive at all. Also, we purchased uh, the spray for mosquitoes. Um, you can spray it on your clothes; it stays on your clothes for six weeks, even after washing, up to six weeks. And there's a different one that you spray on your body. So you spray some on your clothes, and the clothes are protected for six weeks, and you spray some on yourself. So in the event you are uh, exposed to uh, mosquitoes, they won't light on you, and they won't light on your clothes. What is the name of that spray? I'm afraid Ranger. I... Huh? Ranger. I, the one we purchased was, uh, the brand name was Ranger. Over the counter. Uh, we bought it at. You can buy it on Amazon, but uh, we bought it at the. Yeah, maybe uh, have something to eat. Yeah, you say again, please. You can get it at Amazon. You can get it online. Oh, okay. They have both a large can and a small can. Uh. How long do you think a can lasts? <laughs> It'll last you all of the trip, I'm sure, uh, unless you know, because uh, a little bit of that spray goes a long way. Um, and the one, the fact that you have it on your, you spray your clothes, yeah, and it'll stay on there for six weeks, so you don't need to put that much on your body, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. the exposed areas of your body. Uh, I typically, after I get out of the shower, spray it over myself my legs, my arm, extremities, and then that's it. That makes sense, yeah. Ask him, does it smell? Does it smell? <laughs> uh, they have a non-fragrant one, and they have one that has a little fragrance in it. Okay. All right, that's perfect. And also, Femi, everybody's clear with the whole airline process, questions. And if anything, I'm on standby, so please just communicate with me, call me, text me, communicate with me. Um, beyond that, I'll be working out to close out on the other part of our Ghana journey and getting ourselves uh, ready. And then, so look out for messages and updates in WhatsApp. And then I'll I'll see if we can work another uh, call before we uh, leave, um, early um July. Yeah. Beyond that, uh, we have the general conference call, which I'll still go over some of our information on at the end of the month. So everyone, um. Appreciate uh, everyone taking the time out to join us and um, hopefully everything is clear with everyone and I'll be on standby and looking forward to meeting and seeing everyone as we uh, get ready for this uh, Ghana 24th journey of a lifetime. Yay! Okay. Okay, good night. Yeah, yeah, good, good night. night. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night.